on a par with positive energy and they're both subsets of precursor energy or is negative en energy essentially precursor en it's energy? It's precursor. So negative energy is yeah, essentially it, precursor. It has to come through the vacuum before it be can become positive at all. You know, it, it, this is all conversion. So radiant is the same as precursor, is the same yes, as it's negative? A, it's an energy that's been here since the dinosaurs. Okay. And we're just figuring out that that energy flows without any current. You can't really measure it, <laughs> but it's there, and the battery's charging when it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Now, you can put meters on it, and they show something, but they don't correspond to the actual state of charge in the battery. And that's one of the major um, things that we're trying to look at on these lists is what is charging your battery? It shouldn't be charging anyway, and um, it doesn't correspond. If you put a meter in line with it, no matter how you look at it, it's never going to uh, show that it should be charging at that rate. Yeah, but you might point out too right, that you get engineers who only know how to put a current meter in line. Yeah. And they're saying, well, there's no current here, so it couldn't possibly be so charging. They don't even look at the results. They're not willing to, to charge up the battery and load it down. Charge it up, load it down, you know, and see the actual work that comes out of that battery. And, you know, they look at it, like John says, they, they look at the meters and they say, well, it's, it's not impressive. <laughs> but what the impressive thing is, is to see what the actual energy comes out of this battery. Not to mention, it's, it's making that battery battery better uh, over time as well. So, very good. Well, I was just going to show here then um, a little bit more. If you want to come here and see, it as I, I'm going to start this up again, and just to show you what kind of power. I mean, you can watch the voltmeter, but watch what happens, you know, this capacitor is going to fill up and, you know, very fast and discharge very fast, but you can see the neon bulb. Where am I supposed to be looking? Well, you can look at either one of them. So the neon bulb is showing you. So that's how much power going into that charging battery. High potential. High potential. So now what I'm going to do, <laughs> yeah, you, you got to do it <laughs> pretty fast, otherwise it's going to blow up this capacitor. So now what I'm going to do is show um, these batteries and uh, swap these batteries around, which on that one I have the switches that could just do that. Um, but here we're just going to swap them around. So you can see, you know, that the battery can be swapped around and recharged. And the other one powers it. That see, was just the, uh, the capacitor makes it possible, it converts the energy to a positive energy that the battery wants to see. So now it's more like as if you took that battery and you used a wall charger to charge it. Yeah. And that makes it possible now to switch the two batteries. Yeah. We're taking it out of the negative time domain and bringing it to the positive time domain. Yeah. Now let's start it up again. So you've just switched batteries here. Yeah. Mm, this is one that's slightly in. See, when you do that with the <laughs> capacitor, when you, you can, spark it, you damage. Well, what happens is it can, you know, go back into the trans, uh, transistor and, and ruin the points. But so that's why we have the neon bulb on there. Yeah. Uh, so that there is some protection, which many times I put a resistor in series with that. So it Does he take the, take the charging battery out? Oops, that's not one. <laughs> it's quiet. So, you know, I wouldn't want to leave that off for very long. Yeah. 
otherwise this is only a 200 volt capacitor and that just go beyond the 200 volts. I, you know, there's no transformer in this. So how do you get a higher voltage than the battery that's powering the, the system? That's what people can't understand. This capacitor can actually be fully charged and actually explode. I've, I've seen that. <laughs> So you got to be careful with these systems. You got to know what you're doing. That's so why. Go, go ahead and run the tape motor. Okay, so we're gonna disconnect this, and uh, so they can watch it there. And this will be. Oh. Now what's going on here? Huh? <laughs> the batteries. There's nothing uh, powering it. Yeah, there's right. There's nothing powering look, it. Look at this. Right. There's nothing powering. <laughs> now, this doesn't happen very often. This particular motor has been very strange. Um, as I said, it was running all day yesterday and most of the day today. It's basically running on its own capacitor discharge. It's, it's running on the capacitor discharge, but there's one wire here. One right. wire is only connected to right. this battery. So you got a motor running just off one wire. Oh no! Wait a second. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, what I wanted to say was um, that these batteries, when I brought them in this morning, they were uh, more discharged than they are now. You know what happened was, I think I switched my wires in the wrong position. Hold on a second. That's possible with all these wires. <laughs> yeah, this is why it's such a mess here. Sorry. Um, anyway. Is this? Okay, that's what it was. This one is here. Okay, what we're going to do is run, let's just get rid of this one there. We're going to run this one right here off of these little batteries. I think John was calling this the chirper motor. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's the problem. What I was, I had my my wires crossed. Yeah, mixed up. <laughs> but it was still interesting what was happening. Anyway, um, I think that should be still fine for the video. Cause yeah, it wasn't running nearly as as, as fast. I was like, what's going on here? That's why you know that. That's why I added that little those switches in there, because people always cross their wires. They get them backwards and. Just two flips of the switch, you know. Okay, what we did is we removed that that fan, and now we're going to go back to the the original tape one tape motor. Um, you can see again if you let the batteries rest, they'll come back. And um, when I brought these batteries in this morning, they were um, uh, discharged more than than they are now. And um, and I ran, the, you know, I've been using these all day, and swapping them back and forth. Um, okay, so this is the tape motor fan again. It is a brushless motor in which there is a there's a circle magnet here on the top, and um, on these brushless motors, there's um, north, south, north, south, either four or eight poles around here, and then there's individual coils here. In fact. Here's what it looks like inside. Ironless. Ironless. No, well. Ironless coils. Right here, okay. yeah, this one. Um, so now what we're going to do is look at, um, we got this, the scope hooked up. And this one you need to give it a, a good little push. You can see the charging rate, the discharging rate. It's going to go through some phases here. It's going to go And this one draws a lot of power because this is pushing as it gets up to speed. So it's going to take a little bit to get all the way up to the maximum RPM. 
And we're not, you know, we're not putting any load on it, so it's going to go faster. Just to uh, reiterate, Rick, which is the, uh, s the the driving signal battery, and which is the battery you're charging, and which are the corresponding uh, meters? This one is powering. I, I got them in reverse now from what it was before. This one's powering the system with the clips, and this one's charging. Okay. Now, now here's the difference. This one does not have the capacitor dump on it. This one here is powered, and this one is charged. Because if you take this off, see? Oh, no, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. Yeah, you gotta, I have it backwards. You're right. You're right. So, yeah, you can see the neon bulbs come on here. And the neon bulbs indicate what? You're, you're protecting the transistor. Indicates the radiant energy in the system. Now, these ones also have resistors in series with the neon bulbs. Keep them from popping. Because, as you can see, you know, this one can be run at 24 volts. So, because, because the rating is essentially a gas, the neon is one of the only ways you've been able to find to indicate to detect it. To detect it. Yeah, which in the other DVD you can see right. John showing that with one wire, and I've done the same experiments. So, you know, taking it off, it's got nowhere to go, in a sense. And um, so you can see the scope shot. Now, let me get the scope shot here. Well, one way to show this, Tony, the conversion. The battery's doing the converting here. But we can't capture the radiant. Notice that this capacitor is very small. But look at the voltage. Yeah, yeah, that's the one we want to look at. OK, so now. Over 20 volts. Mm -hmm. What's here? <laughs> it filled up that cap real good. Yeah. Let me do it again. And basically, when you use a capacitor dump system, you dump it across this battery that way. See, so this is charged, right? So depending which way it's charged, right? You dump it across the battery. Like that. Mm. And the battery bounces up real so quick. So wait a we got 100 volt divisions here. Yeah. And look how high we're going here. So we can see here that we could constantly keep doing volts. this. Yeah. So that would pop those capacitors if you yeah. left it there because well, it's over 300 right. volts. Right, it's over 300 volts and we don't want to do that. We want to catch that. Hmm. See? Yeah. And then we'll just send it to the battery because it's actually a better place for it to go. And then right away the battery starts charging. And you can hear the motor change yeah. too. Well, because yeah. we're sucking all the energy out and delivering it to the battery. Yeah, so this is, this, the 1266 is the one you're charging. Yeah. 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 So you put more load on the motor and the charging goes up. Yeah, in some situations, yeah. Um, and well, there's, did. yeah. Now this one, like I said, it's a different system because it doesn't have the capacitor dump on it. But yeah, it's going to take less energy. What do we got on the Now screen? we can change the speed on this. Okay, now what I did was let's change the divisions so you can see that. So what are you doing at the moment? No, I'm just, um, I'm just looking at the, the oscope. So yeah, now this one we won't want to, you know, rotate around because we don't have the capacitor discharge. So it's a different kind of charge. And, you know, each person who experiments needs to learn, you know, the difference. 
So this is sort of, oh, and so if we want to change the speed on this, we would change those resistors. Hmm. Huh. 